Dear students, the question number 11 involves a circuit and says that on closing the switch S in the circuit as shown in the figure, the reading of the galvanometer G increases, decreases, remains same, may increase or decrease. Now dear students, if we see this particular circuit, it is a case of balanced Wheatstone bridge because the ratio of the resistances between these two is 100 by 10 that is equal to 10 and the ratio of resistances between these two resistances 40 by 4 that is again equal to 10. So therefore this is the balanced Wheatstone bridge and no current would flow through this very particular arm. So closing of the switch or opening of the switch would make no difference in the reading of the galvanometer. Therefore dear students the correct answer for this particular question should be option number 3. Now let us proceed to the next question that is question number 12. Dear students the question number 12 involves the concept of electrostatics and says that the bob of a simple pendulum of length L has a positive charge Q on it. The pendulum is fixed to a horizontally oriented positively charged sheet as shown in the figure. The time period of the small oscillations of simple pendulum is. Now dear students, in this particular question, we can see that because this sheet is positively charged and because this is also a positive charge, there will be repulsions between these two charge elements. And because there will be a net downward force on this charge, the effective G, that is acceleration due to gravity, would be greater than the usual acceleration due to gravity. Since the time period of a simple pendulum is given as 2 pi under root of L divided by G effective, since G effective is greater than G, therefore time period would be less than 2 pi under root of L by G. So dear students, the correct answer for the question number 12 should be option number 2. Now dear students, let us proceed to the next question that is question number 13. Question number 13 involves a concept of meter bridge and says that a meter bridge setup is shown in the figure. If there is null deflection in galvanometer when length AC is equal to 60 centimeter then the value of resistance R is. So dear students it has been given to us that the length AC is equal to 60 centimeter. So the remaining length PC should be equal to 100 minus 60 that is equal to 40 centimeters. Now using the concept of meter bridge we can easily write that 30 divided by length BC should be equal to resistance R divided by length AC. We can substitute the values of length BC and length AC and write as 30 divided by 40 is equal to R divided by 60. Solving this particular equation we can find R to be equal to 45 ohms. So the correct answer for this particular question should be option number 3. Now dear students, let us proceed to the next question which is question number 14. The question number 14 says that the charge on 4 microfarad capacitor when a battery of 20 volts is connected across points A and B in the circuit as shown in the figure is. Now dear students, we know that since these two capacitors are in series, the net capacitance of this capacitive element C should be equal to 4 multiplied by 12 divided by 4 plus 12. That should be equal to 48 divided by 16 or 3 microfarad. The charge on this capacitive network can be written as Q is equal to CV which is 3 into 20 which is equal to 60 micro coulomb. Now in the series elements when the capacitors are connected as per series the net charge 
on the individual capacitors is same and is equal to the net charge on the net capacitor. Therefore, the individual charges is also equal to 60 microcoulomb and the correct answer for this particular question should be option number 4. Now dear students, let us proceed to the next question that is question number 15. Dear students, the question number 15 says that the ratio of currents passing through the resistance R1 as shown in the figure before and after switch S is closed is. We have to assume that the potentials at A and B remain unchanged. Now dear students, before switch S is closed, the current flowing through R1 would be simply equal to 30 minus 10 divided by 2 plus 2 that will be the current before closing because the potential difference across this arm would be equal to 30 minus 10 whereas the resistance is 2 ohms and R1 would be in series therefore the net resistance can be written as 2 plus 2. So the initial current turns out to be equal to 20 by 4 that is 5 amperes. Now dear students after the switch S is closed let us assume that the potential of this point be V because the net incoming current at this junction should be equal to 0 we can write that 30 minus V divided by 2 plus 0 minus V divided by 3 plus 10 minus V divided by 2 should be equal to 0. Solving this equation we can find out that V turns out to be equal to 15 volts. Now dear students, the current that passes through the R1 resistor should be due to the potential difference 15 minus 10. So the current after should be 15 minus 10 divided by the resistance that is 2 which should be equal to 5 by 2. So the ratio of currents that is IB by IA should be equal to 2. So the correct answer for this particular question should be option number 1. Now dear students let us proceed to the next question that is question number 16.